I'm attorney Gregory Dell, and I'm here with attorney Alex Palomara. And today we're going to talk about the Guardian Life Insurance Company, and specifically we're going to talk about disability insurance claims with Guardian. Now, Alex, we've handled hundreds of claims with Guardian Life Insurance Company. They also used to be, well, they also had a division for their individual disability policies under the name of Berkshire Life. So there's a lot of people out there who bought these individual disability policies under Berkshire, not to be confused because now they're operating under the Guardian name as more of a branding, um, their branding message, but it's still the same company. So to give an overview, and this video is going to be more of, is going to be an overview video of the Guardian Life Insurance Company, and we'll talk a little bit about individual disability policies, but we'll mostly talk about the ERISA employer provided policies because that's the majority of what Guardian sells as compared to the individual life policy. So we'll talk a little bit about applying, um, appealing claim denials, and then lawsuits. Um, very rarely will they do a lump sum buyout, but they do, they do happen. And then for people watching this video, we have other videos that we've done where we discuss the application process. We specifically discuss appeals with Guardian, and we also discuss lawsuits with Guardian, which dig into a lot more detail. So let's start with overall. What's your view of Guardian as, as one of the 40 disability insurance companies that are out there selling these types of long-term disability and short-term disability products. What's your view of Guardian as a company? Certainly not the worst. You know, there are far worse disability insurance companies. I won't name names, but Guardian is not the worst. They do a better job of reviewing most files. Of course, they deny claims, and I see some of the bad side of Guardian every now and then, but when it comes to disability insurance policies, I would say if you have one with Guardian, you're starting off on a better foot than, let's say, I won't name names, like I said, but dif different disability insurance companies that just do a terrible job. Guardian kind of takes it, uh, they're kind of more responsible with their claims, but that being said, there are issues with their policies. Um, and we can discuss that at length. So we'll, we'll get into those issues, but I, I agree with you. I think they're one of the better companies for whatever that's worth. I think that their people are, are better trained. I think they're going to try to do a more thorough job when reviewing a claim, which could potentially be good and bad for a claimant. That's true because if they're doing a better job, then they're gonna clearly pick apart any inconsistencies. They may have better contacts to try to deny a claim. So it could be potentially more difficult. That's true. However, there's different companies that look to deny claims versus looking to, to find- a true review of a claim. Right, and I think that they will lean more towards trying to do a, a better review of a claim, probably because they don't have as much volume as some of the bigger That's companies out there. Why. So uh, let's get into dealing with a guardian. L let's talk about the policy language on a guardian because there are some limitations that you and I discussed specifically and, and they sell different versions of their policy. So when you call us and ask us to review your policy, you may not have the exact policy that we're gonna discuss. However, this is the one we, definition we most commonly see, which is how do they define their own occupation in their disability policy and what concerns you about it? Well, that's one of the first things I notice when I see a disability insurance policy. I look for what it means to be disabled, the definition of disability. If we look at a guardian policy, most of the policies I see, they have, when to define what your own occupation is, they define it as they'll look at the They'll look at the, um, the requirements that your employer provides them, the duties that your employer provides them, but they also look at another document. That's the Dictionary of Occupational Titles. So they, t they take into account two things, the requirements that your job provides, your employer provides, and the requirements that are found under the Dictionary of Occupational Titles. And that's bad. That's kind of really bad in my eyes. The dic Dictionary of Occupational Titles, it's a document that has not been updated in I don't even know how many years, at least a decade if not longer. Obviously the world has changed in the last 15, 20 years, it changes on a regular basis. So some of their requirements of the jobs as they define them in the dictionary are totally wrong and, and have nothing to do with our client, client's uh, current restrictions, or sorry, sorry, current requirements of their occupation. So the insurance company gets a chance at denying the claim saying, hey, we believe you can do uh, these requirements found here, when in actuality, our, our client has, has no responsibilities of doing those requirements whatsoever, and they're looking at, kind of looking at a different job altogether. So let's talk about it just to bring it into perspective. You, if you have like an accountant, for example, they may say, okay, we looked at the Dictionary of Occupational Titles, that's a sedentary job, it requires you to sit for six to eight hours out of the day, and then we looked at the job description from your employer, which says that you review financial statements and prepare reports. Right. And so that is kind of a basic description of what the job is. And then based upon that, 
our client may say, no, that's not exactly what I do all day. I have to go out, I have to go visit with clients, I have to um, advise, look at all these bank statements, I have to go to meetings, I have to carry things, whatever it is, I'm not just sitting at my desk all day, every day, and there's a tremendous amount of thought that goes into this, and while I might be able to sit for X amount of hours, they're not factoring in any of my limitations caused by pain, as well as cognitive difficulties that come to me when I have to think about what I'm doing, and then the definition of disability doesn't consider all of those things. Right, the Dictionary of Occupational Titles will give, let's say, they'll, they'll give a strength requirement, of a, they'll call a job a sedentary job, and Guardian says, if you can do a sedentary job, that means you can sit there all day. If you can sit there all day, you're not disabled. And that's what the, uh, Guardian and most disability insurance companies like to do. They say, if you can sit, you can work. And that's not true one iota. All right, so let's segue into how Guardian goes about handling their appeals. And do you think that in terms of a review, does a person get a fair review? And, and how do you, you know, how are you helping the claimant when they have to file a disability appeal of a denial? I guess a fair review depends on who the, who the appeals analyst handling your claim. There's some good and bad appeals analysts at Guardian that I've, that I've dealt with in the past. I mean, some of them do a really thorough job and they get to, they do a true review of the claim and some of them just seem to hire you know, these, these random doctors who maybe perform a five minute review of the medical record and give a terrible opinion on the actual claim when my client is actually disabled. Um, but doing an appeal is the most important part of your claim. If, if you're doing an appeal, obviously your claim has been denied. The appeals process, especially when it comes to an ERISA claim, a group disability insurance policy, it is your, it, it's so important to do a strong appeal. You can't just throw together an appeal saying, I appeal your denial, your denial is wrong, um, look at my medical records. Because it's the same company. You're asking the same company that has just denied your claim to take a look at it again. And what they're going to do, they're going to deny it again. And then for a lawsuit, your lawsuit's going to be that much weaker because your appeal was that weak. So with an appeal, the purpose of an appeal is actually twofold. To get you back on claim, proving to the insurance company that you are disabled. The other um, portion of it is to strengthen your file for a potential lawsuit. Once Guardian issues a final denial of your claim, once they deny your appeal, no more documentation can get into your claim file for the lawsuit. And the claim file is the only documentation the judge is going to review for the lawsuit. So once they issue a final denial, let's say you go, um, additional testing comes back, you had an MRI done a month ago or a functional capacity evaluation done a month ago, the testing finally comes back, you say, hey Guardian, take a look at my testing now. Look, it proves I'm disabled. If they already issued a final denial letter, it's too bad, so sad. You cannot get that information in and the judge will never review it. So an appeal is the most important thing you can possibly do for your claim. Again, it gives you a chance to get back on claim and it also gives you the final chance to strengthen your claim for a lawsuit. So what do you think when you're working on a guardian claim are the two most important things you have to do to give a claimant the best chance to win their appeal? You need to get a copy of the claim file from Guardian. The first thing you do, as soon as you're denied, other than contact us, the first thing you do is get a copy of the claim file. If you hire us, we'll be ordering a copy of the claim file. First thing we're gonna do is dive into that claim file. We're gonna find all the reviews that Guardian is hanging their hat on as justification for denying your claim. Okay, so you think that the Guardian reviews are important. Why are those important? Of course, it's what their justification is. I mean, if, if you are disabled and those reviews are saying that you're not disabled, there's gonna be an issue in those reviews and we have to find out what those issues are, what they overlooked or what they're making up. And, and some of the doctors that they hire, I mean, I don't know where they find some of these people. You know, I don't know if they're motivated by money or what they're motivated by, but they're obviously either going through your medical records and just taking out the positive words saying she felt good today or range of motion better or whatever it may be and, and ignoring a, a huge portion of your medical records that might say the opposite. Um, and I, you know, sometimes I look at someone's medical records and I look at the doctors, the, the um, this quote unquote independent doctor reviews that Guardian hires and I ask myself, how the, hell, how the heck did this person come to this conclusion? It makes no sense whatsoever. Right, so what we do then do on the appeal is we take their medical reviews, uh, we analyze them with our own in-house people, also based upon our own experience of what's going on, and then we determine based upon what we need to do through to get additional medical support to help you win the claim and rebut what their doctors have said, which requires us to work very closely with you and your doctors, and very often we'll have to go about and get additional medical support, whether it's seeing a new doctor, getting an additional diagnostic test done, whether it's possibly doing a functional capacity exam or an independent medical exam. There's tons and tons of options that we'd have to discuss with you, but the starting point is that we have to review that denial letter and let you know what we think would be an option, and of course, like you said, we have to get the claim file. 
which the disability company is required to give you. It could be 500 pages, it could be 15,000 pages. It just depends whether or not you've been on claim before, if you've been on claim for years and been denied, or if you just applied, it's not gonna be as large. No matter what it is, we gotta go through it, and basically that's gonna tell us how they acted in reviewing the claim. The last thing, which I'll touch on briefly, is the, the lawsuits against Guardian. We've filed tons of lawsuits against Guardian all over the country. When it comes down to it, the single biggest challenge is going to be what's the standard of review going to be? Right. And that means do they have a discretionary clause in the policy? If they have a discretionary clause in the policy then, and they're in a state that has not outlawed or abolished discretionary clauses, then we're going to be dealing with this arbitrary and capricious standard of review versus a de novo review. And with the arbitrary and capricious standard of review, that means did, did, did Guardian act reasonably in their review of the claim? And if the judge, and I'm really simplifying this, but in some ways it is this simple. If the judge finds that Guardian acted reasonably in their review of your claim, then the judge is going to uphold the denial. That's if there's arbitrary and capricious. We have to prove that Guardian acted unreasonably. Now we have a better chance of doing that if we're able to do your appeal. If we haven't done your appeal, we're married to the information that you presented on appeal, and then we'll have to deal with that and make the arguments based upon what's given to us. We do both either way, it doesn't matter, that's just, it is what it is, but of course we'd love to do your appeal and give you that much better of a chance to, to win your lawsuit. So if your claim has been denied and you've exhausted all of your appeals already, what you need to do is send us the final denial letter. We'll take a look at it, either Alex, myself, or any of other disability lawyers. We'll review it and we'll be able to determine fairly quickly whether or not we think that you have a case that we can help you with. So. No matter what stage that you're at with Guardian, whether you're applying, whether you've been denied and you need to do an appeal, or whether you need to file a lawsuit, we can help you anywhere, anywhere in the country. We never charge any fees or costs unless we make a recovery for you, and your initial phone consultation is free. So we welcome you to give us a call, and we look forward to speaking with you.